Hey everyone, Cody here, and uh, today I want to talk to you about a really important lesson that I was kind of reminded of this week, and you know, this isn't like me kind of teaching you, oh, like I'm some Grandmaster Jedi, and I'm teaching a young Padawan, and I don't, uh, no, I'm definitely not super wise in the world. Um, no, this is actually just me humbly kind of showing you something that I learned this week that I've kind of noticed, you know, the last few months, but really more so that I was reminded by someone I actually met. So let me kind of set the stage real quick and how this relates to painting. Uh, first off, I do work. So I do have a job. I don't paint full time. I paint on my days off, actually. So I do have a job. I work in a call center. I w actually do technical support um, for a company, which, you know, it may get leaked someday, but no, um, but I won't say where. Anyway, I do tech support. And one of the things that I have to do in my role as a, you know, technical support rep is to be able to build rapport. And what I mean by this is, you know, obviously when, pe when things are going well and stuff is working like it's supposed to, um, people are happy and they don't, we never think of it when stuff works like it's supposed to, we never think about it, right? Because everything just works. Um, we're only upset with things, especially technology, when it doesn't work. And because of that, you know, obviously we never call companies out of the blue to tell them how great they're doing. I've only actually only gotten one call that was ever like that. Um, but otherwise, no, people just call in because stuff isn't working and generally they're pretty upset about it. So because of that, you know, one of my rules in the job that I have is that I have to be able to connect with that person. And it's not a forced thing for me. Like I genuinely like talking to people. I genuinely just enjoy company of people. In fact, I talk to random strangers um, just because we all exist in this planet together. There's not really any getting around that. Anyway, so because of that, I have to build rapport. You know, I'm actually pretty decent at it. And uh, th the only reason I say that is because basically the other day I had someone call in that was like this, it was this lady named Linda, and I'll actually link to her site because Linda sells uh, very unique jewelry. And, you know, just over the course of me trying to help her, um, we got onto the topic of, you know, that I sold art, you know, because she told me she sold jewelry and I told her that I sold art. And she started, gave me some really great advice on suggestions to sell art, okay? And you know, some things that I could try. Now, I realize that nowadays there's a lot of different ways to kind of sell online, well, to sell in general, right? So a lot of, you know, it used to be that in order to sell art, you had to get into a gallery or a museum and most likely a gallery, uh, unless you were super famous. And you had to get into a gallery and you were represented by that gallery, that gallery put on shows, and then those artworks had to be purchased by people with a lot of money. Nowadays, you can still go that route, but there's also the route of selling online. You know, you can sell through an art website, or you can sell through like a third party like Amazon or Etsy. Uh, you can sell on your own website. You know, there's a lot of different avenues you can go. And I've always kind of viewed them as different things, different avenues. Uh, basically, you know, you have that old school traditional way of the gallery and then you have the new school way of selling online. Now, obviously there's benefits and there's pros and cons to each one and so on and so forth, but I'm not really here to get into that because essentially my message will boil down to the same thing. Uh, what, what she, let me go back to the gallery method and then I'll kind of explain how it correlates to online selling because it essentially boils down to the same thing, right? So what the suggestion that Linda gave me was, and the reason I bring this up is because I considered getting into galleries. Um, I sell online exclusively now, but I just to kind of 
get my name out there and build some credibility, I had been considering trying to get into some local galleries here in Arizona. Now, in me telling her that, she gave me the suggestions that I'm going to share with you. And her suggestion was essentially just to build rapport with those galleries. And what I mean by that is, when I told her about this, she said, well, have you gone to the galleries? I was like, no, not yet, but you know, I was looking at galleries to submit to. She's like, well, before you even submit, she's like, why don't you try this? She's like, go to those galleries physically and see what they're like you know see you know what what type of art they accept and you know see you know what the layout is and if it would even work for you right that's that's pretty simple advice pretty sound advice and i had already considered that but her next suggestion was what really threw me off and she said okay so go to that gallery multiple times and she's like what you would want to do is go to that gallery and talk to the gallery owners every time you go in so that they start to recognize you. Go in and ask them questions. Go in and ask and, and just peruse the art and just get to know them and you know start talking to them about what type of art you know they, they are generally looking for and you know just start asking questions about the art in the actual gallery or the artists and just let them know, hey, I'm not here to buy anything. I just had some questions. And you know, a lot of times they're not they're okay with answering that. And if they're, you know, if they only want money and they only want buyers and they don't want to answer questions, then maybe it's not right for you anyway, right? But if they're willing to ask, answer questions and if they're willing to get to know you, then it may be a good fit for you. And so what her suggestion was, was to build that rapport before even trying to submit to the gallery, right? So instead of just going and you know, here's my application and, you know, I'm going to cold call this gallery or I'm, you know, I'm just going to send them a cold email because they, I'm sure they get dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds of submissions all the time. I mean, think about it. A lot of people want to get in. But if you instead go this, you know, you keep in your mind this idea that, hey, you know what, the gallery owners or the people that are running the galleries, they're human. These are regular people that are running these galleries. And if you go in and you start talking with them, you're going to build that rapport. You're going, if you don't, you know, you start going in, you go in just maybe two or three times and just say, hey, you know, I was here last week. I don't know if you remember me. Oh, yeah, so and so. You know, I, you know, I was, uh, you know, I just wanted to see the new pieces that you guys got in and, you know, kind of take a look and, you know, just start again talking to them. And then after you've gone a couple times and they recognize your face, then start asking the questions that are going to lead into, you know, I was just curious, um, what is the process for submitting work? You know, what type of work do you generally look at? You know, do you, what do you, uh, you know, what, what would I need to do if I had some art that I would like to submit? You know, and can I talk to you in person? Because a lot of these galleries, I would assume nowadays, is they just get all of their submissions online. Um, maybe people go in and start talking to them, but you know, you've already, you've already talked to them a few times. So if they say yes, you know, it should bring some pictures of your work and, uh, you know, we'll take a look. Just think of that, that relationship you've built with that person, right? Now, how does this relate to online selling or art in general? Well, I was in marketing for a number of years and the biggest thing that will determine whether someone buys is if they trust you. And obviously, you know, you can buy from a complete stranger if the product is something you absolutely need. But you're more likely to buy something from someone you have that rapport with, someone you feel attached to in some way. Maybe you watch them, maybe you follow them, maybe you know them personally. It doesn't really matter because if you're attached to them and you have that rapport, that is going to go a long way in trying to, you know, get someone to buy a piece of art. So it doesn't really matter if you're trying to get into a gallery or if you're trying to sell online. You know, a lot of people are just like, well, I have my art's on my website. Why isn't it selling? Well, have you built rapport? Have you gone out and talked to people? Have you marketed yourself? And it's not just marketing, marketing, marketing. Like even stuff like this, this video. I don't care if you don't buy a piece after seeing this video. This video is just a small piece of rapport. You know, I've shown you how I I made a piece. You're You're seeing it. I'm not charging you to... Not that it's, you know, Pollock or anything, not that it's, you know, Mona Lisa, 
But the thing is, is that this piece, you know, or this, this video is just another piece of rapport. I've built that with you, right? We spent some time together. You've know you, you got a little glimpse in my life and you saw me at work. So you know that I make my art and you got to learn the, a little bit about me and my job. So essentially, you know, we have that rapport now, whether you like it or not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but ultimately, I, this video is almost over. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this. If you're trying to sell your art or trying to get into a gallery or really do anything where you're trying to get someone else to do something for you, you got to build the rapport first. I mean, you got to give without expecting something in return. And I swear to you, if you start doing more of that, you'll start seeing results um, for your efforts. So ultimately, I'm going to leave with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, uh, share, subscribe, whatever. Check out my other videos and I'll talk to you guys later.